Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be talking about all or nothing and giving my thoughts on the episode. So, spoiler warning, if you haven't played, seen or heard about the episode, this episode covers a lot and I've really struggled with trying to write these thoughts down so I do hope you guys enjoy the video and be sure to leave any of your own theories down in the comment section below. Now it is time to try and answer the question what do we do now? So I want to start this video at the end with this beautiful yet emotional cutscene showing the commander and Areen about to deliver the final blow on Kral'Katarik. Before they can he rears up in anger and tries to destroy the commander however before he gets the chance Areen jumps in front and intercepts the blast sacrificing herself to save the commander. This emotional scene has been the main point of discussion that I have seen within the comments of my videos covering All or Nothing and there have been so many theories on how Aureen can survive or return. Things like she will revive using Joko's magic etc. However in my mind she won't or at the very least not for a long time due to the fact that Kate's Aureen flower withers and fades and because of the line She's gone. Should Aureen be revived in some form, it will need to be earned and it will have to have consequences if it does come to pass. However, the one thing I don't think we'll see is Croc branding her corpse, as that played out in this episode already, and I feel like her body will be taken away by the Zephyrites or the Pact, and a memorial will be built for her in the near future. Aureen's death leaves the Commander and Kaith in an awful position as well as leaving the pact in probably the most vulnerable position they have ever been in. The commander and Kate have lost Aureen who was like a daughter to them and are now emotional wrecks and the pact have lost their one hope of replacing Krakatoric and fulfilling Glint's legacy. With the end of the fight being shown in the cutscene and Krakatoric killing Aureen we don't see the magical energy escaping from Aureen as she dies previously seen from the deaths of Mordremoth, Balthazar and Joko. This is another reason people think she will return, however, the commander who is the point of view that we have in the cutscene is flung back by the blast from Krakatork overpowering Aureen and is knocked out, meaning we, the player, and the commander don't see what happens next. And we know that the commander blocks out for a significant amount of time, as Bran says, now as we know that dragons expel the magical energy they have consumed when they die, Krakatork must have consumed Aureen's energy. Of note the energy of Mordremoth, Balthazar and Joko. Another result of this fight could be the crafting of a new dragon's blood spear as Krakatork was severely wounded and left with a gaping wound where his eye had been ripped off during the explosion that resulted in Aureen's death. Now if this is crafted this could allow the pack to be better equipped for the next time they encounter Krauk and his branded horde. However as Aureen is now dead and we don't have anyone to replace Krauk Torque with the status of Elder Dragon and consume all his energy perhaps we could craft the dragon's blood chain that we could use to bind Krauk Torque, keep him in a place where he can't harm the world. Now with Krauk almost being destroyed by the pact, I feel he will retreat to a strong position, possibly somewhere in the mists where he can't be reached easily. There he can recuperate for a short while feasting in the mists, regaining his strength before attacking again. I imagine he's somewhat scared now because of his fear of the potential future he saw almost came to pass in this episode. Speaking of this, Prophecy has played quite a large role in season 4 so far and continues to do so this episode. We have Croc Torque's Gift of Prophecy which was mentioned this episode by Clint. Uh, it was revealed that he had a vision of a future where he had been destroyed and the world had thrived due to the fact that he did not exist. Now in retaliation to this Croc Torque tries to persuade Clint to help him basically attack Tyria and protect himself. However, when Glint was cleansed of corruption, she began to work against Krog Torek. Now, the episode opens with a talk with Ogden. Ogden mentions three signs, one being the birth of Aureen, another the death of Palau Joko. Uh, it isn't said what the third sign is, but as the signs lead to Ogden sending us to complete a set of trials designed by Glint for her scion and its champion, I imagine it's something to do with Aureen choosing the commander as her champion. Therefore, I'm guessing the three signs are the scion being born, 
the Scion absorbing a large amount of magic, aka Jogo's death, and the Scion choosing a champion, signifying that the Scion of Glint is ready to take on the task of replacing Karl Torek and is ready to fulfill Glint's legacy, meaning that Glint's legacy could have been fulfilled by Vlast or Orin. Prophecy has also played a major role in the story of Orin, uh, and it seemed to me that her gift of prophecy shows her moments in the near future that would threaten her existence. This seems true from all her visions, as far as I can tell, Primordus attempting to destroy her as she hatches in Tarir, uh, the return of Palau Joko, and the main one, her death in the fight against Kralkatorik. Now one thing of note from her vision in A Star to Guide Us is that the first vision of her death, presumably the most likely version, seems to be under Thunderhead Keep. Now to talk about the map, Thunderhead Peaks. This map was the first time I had played uh, the map in question in Guild Wars 1 before Guild Wars 2, and it was really amazing to see how recognisable some of the locations were specifically around the keep at the top of the map. Uh, they really were very well recreated. The map was a breath of fresh air as the previous nine maps had all been set in and around the desert. Uh, and I think what was the most fun for me was hopping on my griffin at Thunderhead Keep and flying down to the ice flow and going swooping up and down. Uh, the verticality of the map was truly special and I, I just loved it. And it was also really fun to roll down the mountains on the beetle and hitting that jump into the ice flow was a lot of fun. There was lots of things to do in the map and lots of cool events. Some with very emotional side stories. Uh, for instance, an adventure where you had to resupply a dredge sniper so he could continue to take out the branded dredge in his village. He mentions uh, that, quote, the last thing I can do for my friends and family is to liberate them permanently. Something I never really thought about in the story of Guild Wars 2 before this episode. But seeing your loved ones being corrupted by the dragons must be devastating. Unfortunately, there are quite a few events that only run at certain times in this map. However, the map is on a two hour cycle, so you won't have to wait too long to get a chance at something. All in all, it's probably my favorite map of Living World Season 4. And if this is the final episode of Living World Season 4, which an article on RedBull.com claims, the link's in the description, it definitely was a fantastic finale. The story left on an emotional end with little hope and the map was brilliant with awesome verticality. I think season 5 which Ernie says will follow season 4 directly will be about finding a way to trap or kill Krauk Tork while keeping him at bay throughout the season uh, unless maybe Krauk Tork cowers at the thought of his near defeat and a new villain or event takes our attention away from Krauk Tork for some time. We could defeat Krakatork through Kunavang, I think I'm pronouncing that right, uh, the dragon seen in Kantha during Factions. However, as I've not yet finished Factions, uh, I can't really elaborate too much on this. There's also the possible route of reviving Orin, which like I said before, really has to be earned for it to not take away from All or Nothing's final moments. But it does have the potential to fill a whole season, depending on how they write it. We could go about crafting a uh, new Dragon's Blood Spear, or maybe chains uh, with the remnants of Krakatoric that have been left behind underneath Thunderhead Keep, and go about defeating him or trapping him permanently in one final Living World Season 4 episode. Whatever the future holds, I think Arena have to tread carefully with the next episode or season, as there is a danger that the follow up to what I think is a fantastic episode, it really has to hit home. I was nervous after the death of Joko, but they landed well with a start to guide us, so I do have faith that they can pull it off again. Perhaps now is the time to finally return to Kantha and try to get uh, Kunavang to take the place of Krakatoric if that is possible. However, I have a feeling that Kantha would really need an expansion. Uh, looking at the map, there's a lot of territory to the east, which is yet to be explored too. Perhaps the Blood Legion homeland could have the key to stopping Krakatoric. Whatever episode is next, I think it's most definitely going to have to have a memorial to Orin, 
a mention of where Kyle Katorik is hiding it. Anyway, that is it for today's video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. And again, I do apologize for the delay. Uh, I already got struck with writer's block on this one. It was very annoying. Uh, you can support the channel on Patreon. The link is down in the description below. Make sure to join the Discord too. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more Guild Wars 2 content in the future. Until next time, take care.